research is about China in Africa, but more broadly, is basically about global China as a phenomenon. And this topic of global China can be broken down into many different elements. Um, most people talk about investment uh, of China from China to other parts of the world, so that's one aspect. But global China goes beyond the economic expansion of China. So there are three elements of global China. Investment, the building of um, local communities through uh, the diaspora um, uh, institutions, and also the third is about the spread of um, Chinese culture and media influence. Chinese power in the world is not just economic. As I said, there is a cultural dimension, there's a social dimension, which means that when we want to examine uh, China's practices, China's policies globally, we shouldn't just focus on economic investment, which is the current focus of most media attention and academic research. We should also look at the cultural uh, way of power and also the kind of network power that China is trying to use to go beyond um, domestic uh, territory. So that's the first takeaway. The second takeaway I would say is that you hear a lot uh, of people describing global China as a case of imperialism, colonialism, empire building, hegemony. Uh, my research and many other people's research indicate that this is not true. These terms are rhetorical terms that do not reflect realities and there is no, not much empirical evidence to establish the fact that China has already succeeded in building empire or succeeded in constructing hegemony. As a matter of fact, many um, studies have found that China is not achieving what it wants to achieve. So China may be having big ambitions, but when it comes to real achievement, um, we're not seeing that much evidence to show that China is becoming or has become a colonial power or empire or has achieved hegemony. Instead of thinking China and Hong Kong is a special case, the relationship, the conflict between China and Hong Kong we've seen in recent years is a special case, unique case. Um, I don't think it is and we should look at other cases where China is trying to exert influence and has come, has encountered a lot of resistance. And I think the recent conflict between Hong Kong and Beijing is just one example among many where global China is creating a lot of backlashes. And I think we should see Hong Kong through the lens of global China. It's the master process, is global China. And, and we can see the, the kind of policies that China pursues in Hong Kong parallel many policies that is pursuing in other parts of the world. I don't think they're doomed to fail, but I think in every society, in every case, there are unique conditions, there are unique history to the people who live there. And so the resistance, the backlashes will take very different forms. So there's no one model that will fit all the countries where China is expanding into. So I think the idea of having a successful case or fail case um, is not really helpful because in each case the challenges may be different and it is the variation in the backlashes and it, in the challenges that we should look at and, and try to get a sense of under what conditions China will get some of the things it wants, under what other conditions China may not get some of the things it wants. So it, even in the case of Hong Kong, I don't think China is totally failing because because with its control of the legislature, with its control over the executive officer, um, Beijing has managed to push through many of the policies and legislations that local Hong Kong citizens do not want. So they are, uh, they are winning on those fronts, but this time with this um, extradition law, uh, it, people are reacting very strongly, and so Beijing is backing off. So uh, I think overall, it's very difficult to say that China is failing. It is succeeding in some areas, but not succeeding in others.